Hello everyone and welcome back to the third chapter of this course. In this course we are going to talk about the components as well as the conditions required for 48 volt technology to work in a real life. So if you're talking about 48 volt technology we basically get three major you can say advantages over what we have in a normal vehicle. So the three things that we are going to discuss about 48 volt technology is start and stop system which you might have heard in Mahindra Scorpio. It was first vehicle I think com to come up with start and stop system in Indian market. Second one is brake recuperation or brake regeneration system. How it works we will talk about it and what are the conditions required it to work in your vehicle because these are condition based things and if something or some conditions are not fulfilling this system will not work. So it's very important for us to know how it works, how it going to work in your vehicle and it from a perspective of an, you can say an automotive engineer, we should know how, how it will work and what are the conditions to be fulfilled to work the system. And after that, the last one is e-boost. E-boost basically helps your vehicle in getting to an optimum speed with the help of an electrical power or by providing or by less burning less fuel to achieve the same speed that you will achieve in an IC engine without 48 volt technology. So not only 48 volt is your electrical system and supporting your electrical components, but we have this 48 volt to help your engine in getting up to an optimum speed with the help of an electrical system. So if you talk about components, the first thing that you will see on the screen is a picture that I have downloaded it from internet. In this, you will find an electric motor. These electric motors could be anything. Uh, after that, we have an engine, belt driven starter generator. And after that, we have a compressor that we talked in about. It is an electrical compressor, not and what we have a belt driven. After that, we have 48 volt storage and DC to DC converter. And in between, we have a small inverter, which is not shown in this system. So now we will talk about each and every component in detail, which is very important. And I must have covered different components in this thing. If you talk about battery, we have a small other course that we are coming up in the future about this energy storage system and how 48 volt technology or other battery components systems are moving from and lithium ion to other kind of things. We are coming up with this several courses in the future. So if you watching this video and you haven't watched our first and second chapter on this, please watch those chapters first so that you can understand 48 volt technology better and in depth how it works and why we need it. So more important components. First, I would like to give a point to DC to DC converter. So DC to DC converter is basically helping to convert and 48 volt current or 48 volt power to an 12 volt so that our 12 volt architecture system in your vehicle could be run. Because if you talk about an electrical component or electronic components, it won't work on 48 volt. It will get shorted till now. We only use 12 volt to charge or to work these kind of components and to help these kind of components work in a proper way. In vehicle which don't have 48 volt, we have a 12 volt architecture in that and vehicle with 48 volt also we have 12 volt architecture so that all other components can be or you can say they could also work in a same way that they were working earlier in the previous IC engine vehicles without 48 volt technology. So this 48 volt technology do have a 12 volt architecture with it to support other components as well. We will talk about this in mild hybrid, how this 12 volt battery are being consumed and used in this whole system. Now DC to DC converter helps in basically converting this 48 volt to 12 volt to charge it and to utilize because 12 volt is also being consumed by electronics in your vehicle to help and support comfort and convenience of yours as well as your passenger in the car. Now the second one is your inverter. So inverter basically helps in converting an AC system to a DC and DC to an AC to help it works as a starter and generator. So you can see we need to have a proper working and to this, uh, this kind of configuration, we need to have an inverter so that we can work on this kind of things and the, this kind of system and fulfill the requirement of this system. 
Now we will talk about 48 volt mild hybrid technology. So anything which is less than 60 volt is considered to be as a 48 volt mild hybrid technology. We will talk about the in detail how we basically uh, bifurcate micro, mild, parallel, series, full electric vehicles in terms of their features. That's why I haven't covered that part in this video. We will cover that in other separate, uh, you can say separate uh, chapters or courses that we will coming up. But we will talk about this in detail, how we basically bifurcate between every different kind of an hybrid technology and on what basis we basically tell them that it's an hybrid, fully hybrid, plug-in hybrid, mild hybrid, micro hybrid. Now of the features of 48 volt mild hybrid technology. So 48 volt mild hybrid technology, as I told you have best and it's a combination of both 12 volt architecture and 48 volt architecture. In this, we have three major features, start and stop, regeneration and engine assist, in about which we are going to talk in the next few slides about the condition, how it works and why we need it. So in this, we have a 48 volt architecture, have a 12 volt architecture, DC DC converter sends the power, change it for 12 volt is being utilized. Now, before going in depth about the system, we will talk about the components of 48 volt mild hybrid vehicle. So the component is, as I told you, most commonly this system is being used in India. MG Hector is one of those vehicles that came up with this belt driven starter generator, 48 volt battery to support the whole component converter so that we can convert this 48 volt into 12 volt and the 12 volt is being utilized to drive this starter. Now you must be thinking if we are converting this whole system into an ISG and saying it as a starter generator, then why we are using this 12 volt starter and, and 48 volt technology. To better understand this, I would just like to give you one scenario. Suppose that you are starting your vehicle first time in the morning. You must have seen that your vehicle struggles to start and it takes time because a high power is required to start your vehicle into cold conditions because first and foremost, we don't have lubrication. Second, there is, there is a power required to turn your vehicle because it has been still for around 12 hours to come up the extra forces that we have on this engine. We need to apply more force. Sometime belt driven starter generator fails to do it. Even in some condition, your ISG system fails to do it. So to support that during those starting period, we need to have a 12 volt starter generator or sorry, 12 volt starter to easily start your vehicle because we have developed it. We have made it so efficient, so useful for the automotive sector so that we can easily use these kind of components and easily help in generating more power and start your engine without any problem, especially in the cold conditions. Now we will talk about this scenario where how 48 volt technology has evolved and how 48 volt technology helped automotive sector to come up with the less emission engine into an high gross weight vehicle. If you talk about SUV, MUV, the majority or the major choices of an Indian consumer is diesel because they are giving better efficiency. They have high torque, high power. But with the help of 48 volt technology, we are seeing few manufacturers to come up with this petrol engine into SUV and MUV. And they're doing it very well in the Indian markets. First and foremost, the example is Hector. If you talk about, if it take for an instance, vehicle one as an Hector and vehicle two as an most popular MUV in the market, which is Innova, let's compare it, how it's different and how it's helping it. So the gross weight of an MG Hector is 16, 30 kg. And the weight of a vehicle is around for Innova is 1650, hardly any difference in between 20 kgs. Now this vehicle one is giving 16 kmpl per liter. This vehicle two is giving eight kilometer per liter. This vehicle one is equipped with petrol engine with 48 volt and it's giving an average of 16 kilometer per liter and approx value 
and the vehicle 2 is only equipped with petrol engine innova do come with petrol engine guys it's not only available with diesel i have driven it with the petrol one and i have seen the worst side of driving an innova with petrol so i am telling it from my experience it's a very 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 expensive shit to buy now which one you will choose just leave your comment or leave your views in the comment section so i hope i have cleared your mind regarding 48 volt technology how it's helping it and how we are moving towards 48 volt technology now we will talk about the conditions that are required to help your vehicle drive e assist recuperation and your uh, engine start stop system but to talk this i need a special chapter so that we can discuss these kind of things in detail so we are basically summing up this chapter over here only thank you for watching this chapter and i hope you have enjoyed and i have cleared your mind regarding this whole isg system why we need it and how basically the 48 volt and mild hybrid vehicle is going to look like so thank you for taking this chapter again and i hope you have enjoyed this chapter and our previous two chapters also if you haven't watched it go and watch uh, these courses because they are very helpful and share these courses with your loved ones and family friends everyone who is in who will be willing to know about 48 volt technology and you should know not even as an automotive student but as a common people because what technology we are evolving you should know and how to get it fixed you should know as an consumers also so that you are not being cheated in the market if we talk about this new technology because as we change in the technology the consumers uh, has consumer has been set on a setback in these kind of new technologies so thank you for taking this course have a nice day be in be safe thank you